I'm Taeho Wan, and I'm making a tutorial video how to make my challenge winning scallop dish. Now, first you want to make the jalapeno salsa. And if you look over here, I have a habano pepper and a jalapeno pepper already charred. What you want to do is put them on an open fire grill, or open fire stove, sorry, um, on medium heat and balance them right above the fire and get them a nice black char all the way around. Many people say, Teho, you don't want to burn the peppers. Well, actually, you kind of do. That black char all the way around cooks it just perfectly because the skin on the outside is very tough and it doesn't even burn the inside almost at all. So, after they're done cooking, you want to have a large plastic bag and throw all your peppers in there. After you put them in the plastic bag, you want to make sure it's sealed nice and tight and it should be getting smoky. You want that smoke to come all throughout the bag. After that, you want to just lay that to the side and wait about one, or two, one minute to 30 seconds to two minutes. After they're done sitting in the bag for about two minutes, take them out and you want to gently wash them under the water. You don't want to go too strong because you want to break the skin of the pepper. They're really easy to get all the black and char off them. Just use your nails and gently scratch it all off. Now, after this, we're going to cut them. Now, as you can see, it was went really fast because they're surprisingly easy to get all the skin off. Now, time for the chopping of the pepper, which is actually one of the hardest parts to do. Now, I'm going to do the jalapeno pepper first. Now, you all know I love cleavers. They're my favorite kind of knife. But when chopping a jalapeno pepper, you want to use a sharp pointed knife because cleaver is dull and flat. It won't pierce the pepper skin as well. First, you want to cut off the entire head of the pepper and then move this out. We don't need it. Next, if you look inside, there's this little ball of just seeds. The thing about the seeds is the seeds are way too spicy to put in the sauce. What we want is the skin. The seeds are the real reason most peppers are so spicy. Because when they're growing, the seeds contain all the raw heat. And that slowly moves on into the pepper skin as the pepper gets older and older and older. So... We're going to clean out all the seeds by first gently cutting everything attaching to it, attaching the seeds little nest to the pepper, then you want to cut all the way straight down off the skin. And it should be fairly easy to break and cut. Once you open it up, you want to cut three slices on each little crevice you see. After that, it's nice and opened up. You want to grab this little seed pit and just get that out. Now, as you can see, even though we have this out, there's a lot of different little pieces of seed residue. What you want to use to get that out is not the blade of the knife, but the back of it. It's nice and flat and won't damage the pepper. And you just gently scrape all the seeds out. Once that's done, you want to set this aside. I already have three peppers done, and I'm putting it nice and gently. Now, the poblano pepper is really different than the jalapeno pepper, cutting-wise. It's the same basic process, but it's much more difficult. The thing with the jalapeno pepper, there's just more air and room inside it. But these things are barely even hollow. Once you cut it open, as you can see, this seed pit almost takes over the entire pepper. So what you want to do is cut straight down. The first thing you do and get it nice and opened up so you can see inside it. Now, it's almost impossible to open up because this seed thing really keeps it together. You want to be very, very careful when cutting these because it's very easy to cut your hand. You want to kind of cradle it and cut all the way around the, the complete premises and area of the pepper until you eventually get the seed pit out. After that, cut along the crevices again. The, um, cutting along the crevices actually allows you to flatten pepper more down well, flatten the pepper more across the cutting board so it's easier to scrape out all of the seeds. Like I said again, you want to scrape out all the seeds with the end flatness of the knife, the flat side, not the sharp side. But until eventually you get all of the seeds out of the pepper. After that, you're done chopping all the peppers. Hey guys, and now that we have all your ingredients ready, you want to blend it all together. Here's what your ingredients are. Of course, after you're done preparing your peppers, the other ingredients you need is mashed garlic, chopped red onions, cilantro, rice wine vinegar, and extra light olive oil, and ground coriander. 
Now, the first thing you want to put in is one jalapeno and two poblano. Of course, for this rule goes for everything. If you're going to be making more of the sauce than you, well, regularly need, then you want to use a higher ratio of everything. I'm making enough for just a couple servings. So, after you put in one jalapeno and two poblano, you want to put in just a, a little kind of dash of red onions, not too much, just around a tablespoon, maybe two, and one of your mashed garlic. After that's in there, you, you want to grab your cilantro. Now, the cilantro, I mostly eye it out. I don't have exact measurements, but just one or two little leaves, not too much. The cilantro, as you know, is very powerful, very strong too. Now, I don't usually use measuring tools. I usually eye this out, but you want to use just about one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar in there. You don't have to be completely exact. And for the oil, usually I use grapeseed oil. If you don't know what grapeseed oil is, it's oil from well, grapeseed. It's mostly better than almost every oil there is out there because for cooking, it can survive really high heat without burning. And for our case, and almost any other cooking case, it has zero flavor. That's good because it doesn't clash with every, anything. Like, olive oil and other oil and peanut oil and all those other different oils, they have their own flavor which might kind of make the dish kind of taste funny when uh, um, grapeseed oil is very neutral. But for the sake of convenience, since this is found and is way more popular in most households, I'm going to just be using extra virgin olive oil. Now, you want to use only one teaspoon of this. Like I said, I don't usually eye it out. But after that's in there, then you're ready to blend. Next, you want to blend this all together. Now, usually, when I let this blend on a sauce over here, my amazing blender, I'd be multitasking in the kitchen because the heart of the sauce, I make this with my scallop fish, and I usually remake some of the soda, putting some oil in the pan, start sweating and shouts. But as for this video, I'm just showing you how to make the tutorial of how to make the jalapeno salsa. I'm just going to be doing this. Now, once you blend it up just a little bit, you're not done, it's going to stick all around kind of the sides. So what you want to do is grab a little rubber spatula and just kind of mash it all back into the blender. All the gunk off the sides because, well, the bl blenders are very powerful and just everything you put in just exploding all over the blender. Kind of what you want them to do. And once it's all back into place again, you start blending again. You want to do this so everything's nice and distributed and easily and all mashed up. Look at the chainsaw. I mean, being wild wild I man, I do just grab a big metal punch chainsaw, just blend up everything with a chainsaw. But seeing I am only like 13 years old, and that's probably illegal for some reason, I'm just going to use a blender. And then afterwards, I, it should be all done. Now, I have a tasting spoon, and I'm just going to get in there and taste it a little bit. Now, I am actually using the end of the spoon, because that way, not only can you use the end of the spoon to taste, but you can also use the actual spoon part of the spoon. It's two ways to, well, taste stuff. Delicious. You get a good flavor mixture of everything, and woo, that is spicy too. Now, it's not 100% done blending though. Have you forgotten yet? I haven't. The ground coriander. Now, after everything's evenly distributed, you want to just grab a little bit. Now, never grab your thing and just dump it right into the pot. That is a horrible idea. Something can go wrong. Pour it into your hand first and sprinkle in just how much you want. You always want to sprinkle a little bit of ground coriander in there. After you're done, finish up the blending. And then, your sauce is perfect. Now we're making my delicious lemon risotto. So luckily for me, I have an amazing sous chef. She chopped up some delicious shallots beforehand. My sous chef is my mom. And like I said before, once you prepare um, everything beforehand with my jalapeno, she made sure to prepare this too. You want to grab um, your nicely chopped shallots. 
and you want to get a nice large pan with walls because well, of course we're cooking risotto. Now, many people cook risotto in a pot. Why would you cook risotto in a pot? It doesn't make sense. You can't evenly distribute the heat. So, I grab my pan and you want to just about medium heat and have that next and you want to just oil all around the pan and just throw your onions in. Shouts, sorry. And then you want to wait for these to cook and you get a nice golden brown color for about seven to eight minutes. All right, so once your shallots are starting to sweat and cook, you want to start getting your Brussels sprouts right. You want to grab a nice big bowl of Brussels sprouts and make sure you chop up all the ends and wash them thoroughly. After that, you want to grab each individual Brussels sprout and kind of just peel the little, these little flaps off them, the outer skin of the Brussels sprouts, and contain those all in a bowl. These are very thin ones and very fast to cook, yet you still get that nice crunch from them and a surprising amount of flavor from the outer shell too. This is the main part of the Brussels sprout we need. And then after you peel a whole bunch of them, depending on how many people you want to feed, you want to at least four, maybe f four to six of these per plate. We're going to flash pan fry them, which is a little method of my own, which I like to do, which I'll show you after I'm done getting these. Now, after you get all these nice and done, you want to head over back to your shallots. If you look here, uh, my shallots are a nice golden brown color. Look at that. That is exactly what you want. Now the thing is about them is I added a little bit more oil and also one or two little sticks of butter. Little, little pieces of butter. Now, once this is nice and cooking, you want to turn off the heat so it's just stopped. You don't want to burn them. And grab your bowl your rice to actually, well, make your actual risotto. Now, you usually want to use two cups of aborio rice. I'm using three cups, already measured, perfectly measured in this. Again, thank you to my beautiful sous chef, my mom. And because of that, it's perfectly prepared. Don't just throw in the whole jar. Measure it out first. Don't throw in the entire jar. Just don't. Measure the jar. Listen, look at me. Measure the jar. You want to turn the heat back on to a medium low and pour the entire jar. Measure the entire jar. And then you want that to cook very nicely until it's all until it's nice and cooked. Of course, we're going to be adding more stuff along the way, but for now, you want to get it. Just you just want to get it started. So once all your shallots are nice and beautiful co color of golden brown. Um, you want to throw in a little bit of butter and a little bit more oil and just wait till that butter melts. Then you want to grab exactly three cups of Avorio rice. Exactly throw cups. Don't just pour the whole jar in. Don't do that. You just Me did that. Measure it out. I poured in a little bit of the excess cameraman. Don't talk back to me. You're not the chef. Uh-huh. The cameraman's my brother who is, thinks he's all this. But he's a firstborn. He's better than me. Anyway, so... You throw in three cups of rice perfectly, and you want to flip over all the shallots and distribute it throughout the aborio rice. I usually use two cups, but I have a big family, so I'm using more aborio rice. I'm using three cups. And you want to just distribute everything and mix it till it's a nice, toasty, golden, well, toasty brown. And I see, usually it's a nice kind of whitish color. It darkened a little bit. This is exactly what you want. You want it to be nice and toasty, just like this, and you want it to cook just for about one to two minutes. While I'm cooking the rice, I love to grate lemons. Lemons can go good with almost every single dish. I mean that. Except for ice cream. Even ice cream. Ever heard of lemon ice cream, cameraman? I don't like it. Stop it! Anyway, you want to get a lot of nice lemon grate into a little container. I already grated these three lemons off camera because, well, gotta go fast. So, when grating lemons, you want to keep grating down a lemon until it starts losing color to that nice whiteness. That is when you're not even getting lemon anymore. You just want to get the nice skin of that lemon. After you got a lot of lemon grain, you move on to the beetroot. I also did this off camera. See, you're going to have little beetroot garnishes and chips throughout the, um, on top of the dish. Now, beetroots are extremely messy. I already have a little bloodshot wound. <laughs> on me when I was fighting a gigantic battle with the beetroot because they stain very easily. 
What you want to do is chop off both ends of it. And you want to grab your nice little shaver right here and go to long strips. Just long strips, just like these. Once you get long strips, they're pretty much ready. You don't actually have to prepare them that much. Just get a whole bunch of long, nice strips of beetroot. Then you're pretty much done with that. And don't wipe it off your open like that. You're gonna get a whole bunch of just bloodshot wounds, which you do not want. Unless just, you want to look cool. Yeah, I guess they make you look cool, but they're a pain to wash out. Now, if you walk back to the lemons, yes, you have lemon zest, but lemon zest and lemon juice are an entirely different flavor. Lemon zest, you get the flavor of the lemon without the sour. These looks more sour than the actual flavor of the lemon. I got a basic little hand juicer right here. People who use regular juicers, mechanical juicers, or wimps that don't know how to juice their own stuff. Ryan, cameraman, yeah, I'm looking at you. So you want to grab your lemon, just mash it down and juice it and get all the juice out of your lemon. We're probably going to be putting this and uh, maybe squeeze it over off the top of the entire dish and also probably put a lot of it in the risotto. 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 Uh, potato, potato. Manatee, tea, manatee. Tea. So once you get... It's, it's not manatee. It's only manatee. Manatee, manatee. I can say it how I want to say it. But... Cameraman, stop talking. Oxford English. I put duct tape over your mouth just like I did when you were making the jalapeno pepper salsa. Rude. Exactly. That's exactly what we were. Sorry, guys. I have a lot of conflict with my brother sometimes. It's fun, though. So, He's a potato. That's actually my nickname. That's my food name. I love giving people food names that match foods. Mine's potato. Tejo potato. So, once you get all the lemon in here, get a nice juice. Then you want to go back to the arborio rice. Well, your risotto, which should be getting a nice, crispy brown color. If it's risotto, do you not want it to be crispy? Of course you do. So, next we got our chicken stock here. And you want to pour in just about one and three-fourths cup, about two cups. I usually eye it out, it's not that important. And you want, for, well, first of all, you don't want to pour it in all at once. Because obviously it does that. You want to pour it, and it's sparks of You always want to put it in one cup at a time out of your two cups, and let that mix in and distribute evenly and cook throughout the entire thing. Eventually you'll see it, it slowly dissolves and it's, well, almost all gone already. So, that's that. After that, you want to put in your second cup. Now, I'm not using all of it. Pulling a little bit at the time. And in all of and chicken broth, in all, you want to use six cups. But you want to put in not too many at a time. Six or more. At least, at the least, always put six. And before you put in any more, you want it to distribute evenly. Now, after I already put in about one or two, one or two little some of chicken broth. And then you want to grab some delicious white wine. Now I'm a kid, so of course I'm going to use white wine. I got a little white wine over here, and I got about half a cup of white wine. So while this is all distributing, as you can see, the chicken stock just finished distributing, as you can see. You want to grab your white wine. Now, careful, it might spark up a little bit. Alcohol is very... Pour that all in. Delicious. And mix that around. Now, it's going to start to look very creamy, kind of like oatmeal from here, which I think looks delicious. I mean, right now, this looks delicious. You want to turn out the heat just to a, an exact medium. Not too hot, but not too not hot. So how do you tell when it's ready? Well, it's not ready yet. You still have to put way more chicken stock in. But all you want to do right now is wait till this all dissolves. Now... Who remembers the Brussels sprouts? Not me. <coughs> Bad memory. Many people say that Brussels sprouts are very disgusting. But they're not disgusting. You're just eating them the wrong way. You obviously haven't tried how I cook them. If you eat Brussels sprouts the wrong way, they're disgusting. If you don't, they're amazing. What's the wrong way? The wrong way is just doing this. Oh, no, no. Eating them raw, cooking them just in a pan without any oil or seasoning. Don't cook in the right way. The most disgusting thing ever. 
you do, then it can be some of the best stuff. You want to get a nice hot pan with a lot of nice oil. Like I said, usually I use grapeseed oil, but right now I'm using olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Can I use jet fuel? Do not use jet fuel or gasoline. I don't know why. Why would you even suggest that? We're not trying to murder the person by Ryan. Ryan. I bet you don't even know what 9 plus 10 is. 21. Exactly. No, you are oh, that smart. So, this is a nice kind of smoking. This is what I call flash fry. That was dangerous. I'm dangerous. Where's my spatula? My spatula is over here. This is flash frying. This is flash pan frying. Don't get it out of the pan. That was not good because my brother was using his telekinetic magic to mess me up. Stop messing me up with your magic powers. It's Sparky the Law, so make sure you look at me. Make sure there are zero kids in the premises. You do not want to have a single kid while you're cooking this. Anyone, no matter what you're doing or who you are, that's under 18, should not be here. Okay, bye. No, no kid should be here. Okay, make sure you now you want to lower the heat after this. I mean, listen, no matter what the reason, no kid should be here. Wait a minute. Let me correct that. Unless that kid knows how to cook really well and has done this before, no kid should be here. So, if you see these, some of these are getting a kind of a brownish flavor, like a brown like that, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. And that's like a crispiness. That's crispiness. I'm stewing. Oh, oh. No. So, once your rice is just about done cooking, you want to fold in all your heavy cream and you want to sprinkle your lemon zest throughout it and make sure that's nice and evenly distributed. Good. What's Good. another word for distributed? I don't know. I'm busy. You want to get the pepper, 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 pepper. You want to put the pepper inside it. The reason I'm not using my magic is because he's not paying me enough. Sprinkle just a tiny bit of pepper. Done. All you want to put, oh sorry, my neck is hurting too. Pardon me? Then, you can do the excess pepper. Mm. No pepper, then it's enough. You don't want to put too much. Then you want to grab your Parmesan cheese. Open the, open, open the bat, open the bread. Okay. You want to have your Parmesan cheese and magic. You have your Parmesan cheese and just sprinkle it on top. In just a nice circle, spiral inward, then back outward. And once you just sprinkle enough cheese, just for a little finishing layer, you want to grab this and you want to fold it. You hear that? Fold it. You want to Why not layer it? Because you don't need to. I want to make a crisscross. Because that's that, that's that won't mix it. I want to make a crest board. A chef? How do you do that with risotto? Very skillfully. I'm sure somehow you'd find a way to do it. Once you nice, you fold it in. You want to fold it in. Once it's nice and folded it out, it's hot. It, it, it's, it's not going to be cold. You don't want to serve cold risotto. Been there, done that. Ugh. To me. I yeah. Know. It's a prank. April Fool's. <laughs> Even though. It, it was January. Yeah, that's it. You always want to play April Fool's pranks when it's not on April Fool's so they don't expect it. You're going to be responsible for arson one day, I swear. Okay. So, after you put that in, it should be all deliciously cooked. You want to grab your tasting spoon, which I just grabbed the counter. I didn't use magic to summon this because I'm getting kind of low with mana. Just a tiny spoon. Mmm, delicious. Nice and chewy. The pepper has a sweet twist to it. It's, it's delicious. You want to turn off the heat after you turn off the heat. Then you just want to start the scallops, which is honestly probably the hardest part of the dish to do. But can't wait to show you guys how to do the proper scallops. 
So, once everything is prepared, you, what you want to cook last is your scallop. The scallop dish, of course. Now, each regular dish will have three scallops on it. Why three? Because three is an odd number and it looks more pleasing on the plate. The first thing you want to do is have a nice hot burning plate. And I have my 12 scallops here. You want to lay them down in a nice clock pattern oil. Now, of order. Now, let's li listen to the sound. Oh, that sounds amazing. Nice and beautiful. You want to put them in a clockwork pattern so you know exactly which was cooking first and which is you put in last. Want to be very careful with the scallops, especially when you're using tongs. You don't want to burn yourself by putting your hand in a hot, well, pan. I mean, it's your hand. You want to burn yourself. So you use tongs, but the thing is, you can't, you don't want to crush the scallop with your tongs. So you want to be extra fragile and extra careful. Putting all the scallops in. So each one is nice and, nice and Oh, guys, it's a little tricky to get in. Once they're all in there, you make sure you want to let these cook. You want to make sure they're on the, the outside of the pan so they get nice and off cooked faster. Now, the thing about scallops is that they are really, they cook really fast. And you want to do no more than three minutes on each side. So first, you just want to let it sit and cook and stuff. And I will get back to you when it's time to flip them. So while my scallops are cooking, oh, I'm going to basically tell you about everything we've made so far. Now first of all, I did already season my scallops beforehand. You always want to do that before you cook them with a little bit of salt and pepper. If you go over here, you're going to see the delicious risotto we made. That we've already accomplished. Over here, we have our delicious flash pan flash fried Brussels sprouts. Back up a little bit more, our delicious creamy pepper sauce. And right across the table, oh, our beetroot garnish. Now, you want, and for the plate, you want to use a curved plate. That just makes it more look aesthetic, pl aesthetically pleasing. So, once you have all your ingredients ready, and you're just finishing up your scallops, then it's fine. Now, you put them clockwise so you can flip them faster. Now, you want to you want to flip clockwise just like you put them down clockwise. So this way, this way. Just like that. Ooh, these are turning out beautifully. Now, like I said before, I cooked exactly 12 scallops. Because I'm making four plates. Each plate will get three scallops. Why? You always want to cook your meat or put when you have individual things you have to put down in odd numbers. Odd numbers look more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So they're better for plating, and plating is, is a huge part of food. If your scallops or your plate don't look just as good as it tastes, then, well, it's going to be bad. So when you're, um, after your scallops are done cooking, we're going to plate the dish. Now it's time for my favorite part, the plate. The first one you do is go... I thought your favorite part was the eating. Well, everyone's favorite part is the eating, of course, but the favorite part of that cooking process is the plating. First thing you want to do is grab a nice scoop of your risotto and place a, a nice big pile of that right in the center of the plate. Just like that. It's just a big kind of a circle thing. It's okay if it gets kind of messy around the edges. We'll fix that later. Perfect. Just like that. After this, you want to go over to your scallops. Scallops, scallops, it's Gordon Ramsay says it. Like I said, you want to put just about three of them. Very precise. Three of them. 
After that are the Brussels sprouts. Come over here. Nice and hot Brussels sprouts. Ooh. Remember, these you don't want to use too much of. These are more of a garnish. So, just enough for the flavor, but also not too much that it overpowers the dish. Because the main stars, of course, for us to be the scallops. So right there is perfect. So, one now, after you've finished putting your risotto and your scallops on the plate, that's when you want to start putting your Brussels sprouts. You want to lay about two Brussels sprouts for each little piece of, well, scallop. You want to put them slightly overlaying it right next to it. Now, I love Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to put, just put a little bit extra just around the edges just to eat because, well, my family and me devour Brussels sprouts. After that's done, you want to grab your beetroot. Three little pieces next to each Brussels sprout. One, two, three. Now, why do we make so much for so little? We're not done with those yet. We'll put that after we put the sauce on. Now, put a, just so you know, this spots sauce is still very spicy. If you're not too big on spiciness, you do not have to put this on your dish. If you do like spiciness, go ahead, challenge yourself. Now, if you're very mild, just put a, just a little bit, on t over, overlaying the Brussels sprouts and a little bit around the edges on the risotto. Once that's done, comes the beetroot. Look for a nice, just perfect beetroot that looks Perfect. And you want to put it right in the center, like that. And then we're not done yet. Grab a nice paper towel and wipe off all the excess oil around the edges and just clean it up a little bit in those last few seconds you're making the dish. Tuck in any bad rice, get all that bad oil out, make it look pretty. After that, it's done. And that's after that, it's done. I made two plates for my because I'm gonna make two more for my family. That's how you make my scallop dish um, challenge winning scallop dish, of course. Now, for, in the scallop dish, as you can see, we have the risotto, that nice flash fried on Brussels sprouts, that nice jalapeno spicy sauce, and the star of the dish, the scallops. And who can forget that lovely red beetroot garnish? This is Tayon signing off.